Good morning, everyone. Welcome, DEF CON. Thank you all for being here so uh, early in the morning with me. Um, this talk is porn and privacy. Hopefully you're in the right room. Um, I do have to start because my time has already started. Um, and I have to be done by a certain time. So I know some of you are still joining in and uh, I, am, I, I have to get started. Who am I? Um, my name is Edna Johnson. I also go by ET. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a cybersecurity professional as well as a master's degree student. I compete in OSINT CTF competitions. And I advise my friends on digital safety. I do want to give a content warning for this talk. I'm going to be talking about subjects that may be triggering. And if you do have uh, any triggers regarding these issues, I will happily share this information with you at a later time. But I'm going to be talking about non-consensual intimate image abuse or revenge porn, uh, deep fakes, and sextortion. And uh, I want to give a disclaimer that as a cybersecurity professional, I am here sharing my technical knowledge to make your digital lives safer. And it is important to note that I'm not a mental health professional. While I'm here to provide guidance on matters that affect your personal lives, I am not equipped to offer mental health assistance. So if needed, I do encourage you to seek help from an appropriately trained mental health professional. Uh, our roadmap today is I'm going to be going over some obscenity laws that are being passed in states. I'm going to cover NCIIA, non-consensual intimate image abuse or revenge porn. Uh, we're going to go over some deep fake as well. And then we're going to go over how to minimize the risk of images being abused online. And if they have been abused, how to recover from those images when they've been leaked. So the first thing is the obscenity laws. States all <clears throat> have been passing laws where um, they're requiring you to upload your government ID to be able to access adult content or pornographic material. And um, so Pornhub, for example, has been uh, blocking states from being able to access their website because of these laws, because of the privacy implications that it contains. So um, if you're coming from any of these eight states currently, that is Utah, North Carolina, Texas, um, and others, you'll get a message from Pornhub showing you that um, says basically, dear user, if you're visiting from these states, your government officials have um, this requirement to show your ID. And uh, that is tying your your porn habits to your actual identity. And um, thank you. <clears throat> so that is a, a, a privacy concern. Um, okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so um, these eight states have already passed these laws and they're in effect currently. And so um, when people are accessing porn from these sites, they're either needing to use a VPN to access porn providers that um, are, are blocking the site or they have um, providers that aren't as you know, compliant with laws. And so those might be a little more sketchy websites. Um, more states are currently passing these laws, such as uh, Florida just had this law go in effect on July 1st. And these laws are typically packaged with some kind of a, a child protection, internet uh, protection bill. Uh, so for example, in Florida, um, they have now provided a law that gives a minimum age for kids to use social media. And so they tied that in with this um, this block, uh, adult material block. Thank you. 
Um, so I'm going to go over some basics regarding inter to digital privacy. And a lot of you, most of you probably already know this, but I want to make sure we all have the same fundamental knowledge. So digital privacy refers to the protection of private citizens' online information. So that can be companies collecting information on users visiting websites, or it can be your sharing information on social media. All of our activities online are going to leave a digital footprint, and that information can be used to help identify us. Uh, personal identifiable information, PII, is information connected to a, a specific individual that can be used to uncover their individual identity, such as social security number, full name, email address, and phone number. Um, make sure you're using strong account security basics. So the basics are, are necessary. And um, first, make sure you have strong passwords. So you can accomplish that by ha using passphrases, using at least 10 or more characters in your password. Uh, use multiple character types, such as numbers, special characters, upper and lowercase letters, and then use a password manager to manage all of those passwords. And examples include Bitwarden, KeePass, and 1Password. Additionally, uh, I recommend using a two-factor authentication or multi-factor uh, application, and those could be SMS or text messages, applications such as Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Duo, and more. Or you can use a hardware token such as YubiKey. Um, for your security hygiene, so if you're creating uh, accounts on adult websites, uh, try to limit the personal information and, and keep in personal information off of those spicy websites. Limit the information that you share that could be used to identify you. And I recommend using separate email addresses for activities. So you could have a um, email account for your personal accounts. So if you're emailing your dad and things like that, uh, a different email address for your banking, and then an email account for your spicy websites, your adult content websites. Um, that way, if any of those are compromised, you're uh, limiting the scope that of damage that can happen. Um, OSINT, or Open Source Intelligence, uh, that is the <clears throat> searching for and analyzing information that is publicly available and meant to produce actionable intelligence. And that can be found using public records, images or videos online, uh, by finding it on websites or social media platforms or more. All right, uh, non-consensual intimate image abuse, NCIIA, um, also known as revenge porn. So non-consensual intimate image abuse is the distribution of sexually graphic images of individuals without their consent. This includes images originally obtained without, without consent as well as images originally obtained with consent. And this is usually in the context of a private or a confidential relationship. Um, when you've been compromised or your images have been leaked online, uh, you might feel like something is off. Uh, you could have an influx of friend requests on Facebook or lots of new followers on Twitter or uh, your in inboxes are overflowing all of a sudden. So when you are finding yourself in that situation, uh, the first step is to do OSINT on yourself. And you may want to find a friend to help you with this because it could be an emotional experience to go through. Um, when you do find information, you, you want to make sure to do online hygiene um, and, and do checkups to make sure that you don't have information that could make things worse. Um, so you want to limit the information shared online. And um, you got to know what's out there before you can start to clean it up. Um, <clears throat> some of you may know of Caitlin Bowden. Um, Caitlin had her images um, leaked online. And uh, those images were from um, 
She had been in a relationship and the images were on her ex's phone. And it wasn't her ex that uh, shared them out. It was um, the phone got stolen and the phone did not have any um, passcode on it. So some stranger shared out her images and uh, she wanted me to let you know that offline access is only as secure as the device it is on and that these are very special pictures. And so conversations matter. So make sure you have conversations with the people that you're sharing ahead of time. Uh, so when you're sharing your intimate images, have those conversations with your uh, partner or your spicy friend about the expectations of those images, uh, where they can store those images, such as on the phone or computer, um, any other place, um, are they even on the cloud? Um, are they able to show those pictures to other people? Um, is it something that they can send to anyone else? And do you expect them to be deleted at any certain point, such as when you break up, so that they are no, more, no longer in your possession? Uh, when you're sharing images, you want to make sure that you're watermarking them. Um, and that is to put a word across the image. And you can do that both by putting the location where those images were shared, such as OnlyFans or Discord. Um, you can also put the their name or handle, such as Too Hot to Handle or Dave. Um, and you can hide those watermarks within the image in dark spots, like in shadows, and make them small so that they're not really visible, but then if they are okay. leaked later on, you're able to find out who was the source of the leak or what was the source of that leak. Um, a lot of platforms already remove EXIF data, but it is a good idea to remove EXIF data from your images so that they don't contain, for example, your geolocation. And um, you can create an inventory of a list of images that you do share out so that you can easily reference um, where those images were shared from and who they were shared to. Um, so when you do have an incident with images being shared out, there is a uh, website called stopncii.org. And with the images that have been leaked, you can upload and create a case on that website and they will um, go through all the major platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, um, Pornhub, OnlyFans, and they will help you to remove the images from those platforms. Um, you're also able to remove those images from Google searches. So a lot of times when images have been released, they will contain your personal information. It, it gets added to um, the, the images and they'll include whatever personal information they have about you. And so you can request Google to remove from the Google search results. So if you're searching your name, your images that are your personal explicit intimate images are removed from the Google search results. Another process that you can do is a DMCA request. Uh, this is using copyright law to have the images that belong to you removed from websites. Um, the DMCA.com website does have a section that uh, helps you go through the uh, steps of remo removing revenge porn from the web. Um, and, and you can find that on their website. <laughs> All right, so AI. So recently, AI has been exploding uh, in popularity, and the tools are being created. There are being created tools to abuse uh, images, and uh, so we've got AI is going to be used to change the world as a tool to make the world better, right? As a tool to make the world better, right? So um, there's been a lot of new apps that are targeting, mostly targeting young men, where you can 
change images to um, either put somebody into a bikini or removal of their clothing or put somebody's face onto other images. Um, and these are being advertised on Instagram. They're not in some um, dark corner, dark web marketplace. They are, they are out there. Um, and so new laws are needed to be passed. Uh, there's states that have passed laws against this, but more comprehensive laws are needed. Five minutes. Okay. All right, so tips for using OnlyFans. Um, when you create an account, set up a monthly charge, use a fake name, do not use your real name. Um, create new social media accounts for advertising it, don't tie it to your existing accounts, and fake publicly available location. Um, to lower the risk of rent porn, regionally block your state. So if you're from Florida, block Florida. Uh, that way you don't have people from high school finding your OnlyFans account. Make sure to watermark your photos. Um, OnlyFans does have an easy block feature that allows you to delete their content after they've been downloaded. Um, and if there is a leak, OnlyFans actually owns the content that you publish on their website. So they will send their lawyers to do the DMCA notices for you. Uh, make sure that you enable two-factor authentication. There's a huge problem with accounts that have been um, taken over on OnlyFans where they set up two-factor for you, um, but they do have a support for getting control of it. Um, you have to contact OnlyFans to be able to get your account back after it's been uh, taken over by somebody else. Uh, catfishing tips. So if you think you've been catfished, use reverse image search to look up the pictures. Um, you may find that there's loads of other accounts with many different names. Uh, you can use Canary tokens or Grabify to find out what their app IP address is. Try to verify the identity early on. You can do that by um, doing a video call or getting them to take a photo with a specific sign or symbol that you request and make sure to take things to slow in an online relationship and don't send money to somebody you've never met. Uh, sextortion is a form of blackmail where someone threatens to share a nude or sexual image or video of you unless you give in to their demands. It is illegal in most states and if you pay a scammer once they will never leave you alone. Um, if you are being sextorted, do not give in to their demands and all contact with the extorter immediately. Turn off your social media accounts and LinkedIn accounts and serve the blackmailer with the cease and desist notice and make sure to file a police report against the extorter. Um, currently states that have NCIA laws are almost all of the states except for two. Um, laws that have uh, states that have laws against extortion is about half of the states in the United States currently. And um, deep fake laws are um, in some of the states, but it definitely needs to be improved on. Uh, there is a new law being going through Congress right now regarding deep fakes. And uh, we'll see how that goes through. It's, um, yeah. Okay, so resources. There is an organization called Operation Safe Escape. Um, they are a great organization with um, support from cybersecurity professionals. If you have an interest in helping out with people in these situations and also with stalking and uh, domestic violence, this is a great organization that um, does need help from cybersecurity professionals. So they are accepting volunteers. Um, <clears throat> If you or somebody know, you know is needing assistance with any of the kinds of issues that I mentioned, uh, lock down your life. Um, she has quick, easy learning um, bits that you can sign up for and also has consultations. And then there's a platform called Operation Privacy and they um, it's a free platform 
and it has basically like checklists that you go through to improve your your online um, privacy. I do want to remind you that this is uh, tough to go through. So if you are experiencing any um, kinds of these situations, there's a phone number 988, as well as the website 988lifeline.org that does provide um, assistance if you're needing to talk to somebody. And um, I definitely recommend if you are experiencing any of the um, situations that I've talked about to talk with someone, whether that's a friend, family member, or a therapist, you don't have to keep it to yourself. I want to give a huge shout out to Caitlin Bowden. She has done so much great work for this, um, for revenge porn. And, and I really look up to her and I appreciate her help in uh, preparing this presentation. Um, my name is Edna Johnson. Uh, you can email me at edna at edna.tech. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Blue Sky at Ednas. Thank you all so much for being here today. I appreciate you.